Welcome to Bike Out Leisure, my name's Charles and I'm going to take you on a tutorial video around this uh, Ace Ambassador that we've got here. Um, just to make sure that we know how everything attaches to it, how everything works. Um, so what we'll do is start from the door. So we've got the door here which locks and unlocks during, by the key there and we have that magnetic um, catch here so that we can pin it back against the caravan. It's quite a nice hold on there so you do have to give it a bit of a yank to, uh, to get it off. Uh, door can lock from the inside by pressing up the uh, the lock here down to the middle for open and then that opens it from pushing down fixed pane window again with a, uh, a, a blackout blind for blacking out the cabinet at night time and i've been obviously attached to the door there as well motor mover sitting on the front of the caravan there so we'll have a quick look at that at the end of the video external power socket on the outside of the van that is purely for when we are attached to mains uh, can't be used from the battery it is a domestic plug socket okay um, so just bear that in mind only when we're plugged into mains is that uh, usable cupboard going underneath one of our seats there just for putting bits and pieces in okay we don't need to um, worry too much about um, pulling stuff through the van we can put it in through there so that's no problem at all You've got your external gas barbecue point just down there. When we get to site, what we want to be doing is leveling our caravan front to back. Okay, so we use our jockey wheel to do that, which we have on the front here. This way we can lower and raise the front of the caravan um, to make sure that we're level front to back. So we put a spirit level either on the A-frame, inside the door is probably best because it makes sure the floor's flat. Okay, the caravan does like to be level, uh, certainly does the fridge and things like that. Then once that's done, what we can do is lower our corner steadies down. You see we've got one on each corner here. I've got the back ones down at the moment just for when I'm walking around in there. But the winder for that is in your front locker. We quite simply wind them down, but we mustn't level on them. Okay, the reason for that is we can damage the, the level of the, um, the steadies themselves and the floor of the caravan as well. They're not designed to take that kind of strain. They're purely there to steady the caravan once it's all down um, on the floor. Talk quickly about the hitch. We will do a full hitch up with you when you pick the van up. Uh, a couple of things to note. What we do need to know is we're running 13 pin electrics here. Okay, so if you're having a tow bar fitted, that's the electrics that you want. Or you do need to make sure that you have the, the right adapter to adapt from 13 pin to the seven, if that's what you've got on your van or on your car, sorry. You also need to make sure you've got an Alco compatible hitch head because we do have an Alco stabilising hitch here. So it's slightly larger than a normal hitch head. So we need to make sure we've got room for this to move around freely behind the car without um, scratching the back of your car really. So if you need any advice on that, please do let us know uh, and we can, we can certainly assist with that, no problem at all. Uh, front locker here, it's got an LPG sticker on it. So that tells us that it's our gas locker. This is where we must keep our gas, okay. Um, set up for propane at the moment. You can see I've got my test bottle on there at the moment. Room for two six kilos in here. When they are in there and we're traveling, we must make sure they are strapped in like this one is here. Okay, a strap is also situated over here for this one. Um, and when we're traveling, that the bottle is closed and switched off. Okay, that's very, very important indeed. Um, so we do need to make sure of that. Um, so we have a pigtail here coming out of our bulkhead regulator up there that regulates the pressure to the working gas pressure for the van comes down to the side of our bottle here okay um it goes into the bottle on an opposite thread so it's not lefty loosey it's the other way around okay so make sure that that's nipped up nice and tight using a gas spanner okay um, and then once that's on site and we're all set up we can open the uh open the tap on top and that will allow the airflow to go through the van um, the gas flow through the van in here we've also got some uh, waste hose, I'll show you where that goes in a minute and we've also got a, uh, um, a Viscount Leisure um, um, hitch head cover for you as well and also the Alco um, wheel lock is also sat in the front there so we can talk you through that when you pick the van up as well. Um, we have the spare wheel for the van just set, situated in here okay and the, the uh, spanner for undoing the nuts and everything is also in the front locker there as well. Coming around, here we have a flue for the boiler. Okay, so we have a, a boiler on board that will run off uh, gas. It will also run off the electric as well. Um, that's from the mains electric to 30 volt, okay? Uh, so we need a flue just to expel the fumes when we're burning on gas, all right, like you would have at home. Nothing you need to do with it, just so that you know when it, where it is. Make sure you don't cover it up. It does get quite hot. As I've got the running on gas in there at the moment, so I've got nice hot air coming out of there. Um, so just bear that in mind. 
We're also going to need some fresh water coming into the van. So we've got our test out coral on here. You'll need one of those as well. And what we do is we fill that up at the site, wheel it back to our caravan, and then plug this into the side of our caravan and drop the pickup into the bottom of the barrel. Probably best to drop the pickup into the bottom and then plug it in, just so that we're not bending this semi-rigid pipe too much. Okay. And then again, when you're emptying it, if you pull it out from here first and then lift it out that way, that's a better way of doing it rather than trying to bend this too much because it can end up cracking the, the housing on the actual pump itself. So put it in, then plug it in uh, is the best way of doing that. Okay. Once that's in, we're in a position to turn things on inside. So we'll have a look at that in a second. 12 volt battery here, that's providing our 12 volt side to the system. All right, we've got a solar panel on the roof, so that battery's staying on there. Okay, um, so that's constantly being sort of uh, serviced by the solar panel. So that's there for you for the 12 volt, which is running the lights, um, the uh, water pump, uh, your fridge panel, uh, things like that. We've then got mains electric coming in here, all right. Um, so you'll need a mains lead to, to power that up because there's our 240 volt coming into the van. All right, uh, that will allow us then to use our domestic plug sockets, run our fridge and our um, heating system via, via the electric side of things, okay. Those things will also work on gas when we're just using the battery, but there we go, that will um, more of a domestic kind of situation set up there, all right. These are your fridge vents, nothing to really worry about. Uh, fridge uses heat to cool, so it pulls the cold air in and then pushes the hot air out the top so I can feel that we've got the fridge on in there just making sure everything's working properly. I then got um, my uh, waste pipes that will come out here and sit into and fall into a, a waste container a waste master that you'll need to put down here okay that will collect your grey water coming out of the van as well. Um, what we also have then is our toilet now um, flush tank is up here uh, so that you put our pink chemical and everything in there and then that falls down into our toilet cassette which sits down in here okay um, and that's how we uh, collect all of the um, all of the waste from the van so let's have a quick look in there okay so push the buttons in there we go and that drops down so this is a Thetford uh, toilet cassette that we've got here once it's full it will you get an indication on the top of the toilet that you know it's full all right via an led light we also have the drain for the uh, flush tank here as well we never want to leave anything any any water in the van at all when we finish using it so we drain it with this and make sure we're emptying that as well so we lift the handle pull the whole unit out you can see it sits on wheels and we've got an extendable handle here so we a bit like a suitcase at an airport we can wheel it to our service point once there we open this up take the cap off the end all right and then we press this orange button here what that does is release the air pressure inside the unit and makes it easier when we're tipping everything out okay then give it a little swash out with some water tip it out again make sure we're getting rid of everything in there we then need to reprime this unit using some blue chemical which is what breaks everything down inside the unit all the toilet paper and everything so we need to make sure we're using uh, caravan toilet paper as well by the way um, it breaks down much better than normal stuff and doesn't clog everything up um, so on the uh, on the blue chemical which you'll need um, there's some directions on how to do it so we have a measuring cup here so we put a certain amount in with a certain bit of water and then that um, then makes sure everything smells nice and also breaks everything down inside the unit all right on the back uh, number plate goes there okay uh, so you'll need a number plate of course to pick to, uh, depicting the car that you're towing with of course uh, grab handles all the way around and we have um, the bars already in here for a thought bike rack if you wish to buy one and get one you can do just be a bit wary or wary be, be aware of adding weight to the back of your caravan all right you do need to make sure that you are compensating for that at the front because the more weight you have at the back um, you know the worse it can be so just make sure that you're counteracting any weight that you put on the back by adding weights to the front Right, let's have a look inside. Right, nice and warm in here. Got the lights on, got the heating on, so all is well. Uh, I'm just gonna take my coat off because it's cold out there, but warm in here. So now we have um, got everything ready on the outside. We can now get everything ready on the inside of the van. Okay. So what we're gonna do is, firstly, when you first get to your van, you, the way you'll have left it is you'll left all your taps open. We'll talk about that later on. So the first thing to do is come and make sure we close all of our taps, all right? Mine are all shut at the moment because I've already got this van plumbed up. Um, but close all your taps, and then you want to be finding your boiler drain valve and, um, and closing that as well, okay? So there it is. That's our boiler drain valve, which is this yellow, uh, yellow switch here. Okay, you see it's in the downwards position at the moment. That's how we want it. It'll be sticking up in the air, so you just flick it down, and that means it's closed. That way, when we turn our water pump on, it won't just... Um, dump water onto the floor okay it will actually go through into our boiler where we want it 
once we've done that we're in a position to turn on the water pumps and start purging our water system because at the minute our boiler is full of air so are all of our pipes so we need to make sure they fill with water and we get into the tap so what we're going to do is come to our main panel here the on off button is just the one here so we hold that down that will turn the panel on i've obviously already got it on at the moment um because we've got the van runner so um first thing you're going to want to turn your lights on and off so you go to lighting and you can just press them as you can see we can turn them off and we can turn them on. You can also dim them as well by pressing the plus and minus, all right? Um, so once we're in there, we um, we press the pump button, okay, and that's gonna illuminate like so. Right, then the pump is on and we can start purging the water system. First thing what you're gonna do is come to your hot water tap, all right, and you're gonna turn that on. Okay, and we can let that run until it comes to steady flow of water like so. What you'll get, even though, because I've already purged this one, is you'll get a load of coughing and spluttering as the water comes in, pushes the air through and out. So it'll cough and splutter um, for quite a little bit, actually, on the hot side um, until you get a steady flow of water. Then we can lock the tap off, and that is the hot leg purged. We then turn it over to the cold leg, do the same thing, and wait till we've got a nice steady flow of water. That will be much quicker. We're not filling a boiler up first. It's coming straight through the aqua roll and then coming out of the tap, all right? Um, so once you've done that, that's our, uh, our hot leg of the, and cold leg purge in the system. You want to do that in here, do it in the bathroom, do it in the shower. Even if you're not going to use the shower, we want to make sure we get all the air out of the system, okay? Once you've done that, we want to start turning on the heating and the hot water. Okay, so we've got two ways of doing that, but we'll look at the main panel here, which is our Truma panel, okay? Um, so... So in essence, the way this works is um, we have sort of settings going across the top here, okay? So you can see we've got um, this one flashing here, which is the internal temperature of the van. This one here, which is our water temperature. This one here that tells us, or we can select what kind of power we're using. And this one here does the fan, all right? So if I select the first one, all right, that gives me my temperature inside the van. So I use the wheel, okay? I can set the temperature and then select by pressing down, okay? And then I move across to my hot water, press OK. All right, and I can either have it on off, eco, hot, or boost. Okay, so I tend to leave it on hot. It heats it up to around the 60 degree mark. Okay, I think eco does it to about 40. Uh, and boost is um, uh, sort of a 15 minute um, selection where it will prioritize the hot water over the heating system and uh, and just boost your hot water for 15 minutes okay um so just if you're having a couple of back-to-back -back showers or anything like that okay um then we want to select how we're heating it so we have a few we can either heat it on gas if we're on main if we're not on mains electric all right um we can put it on mix one which is electric and gas with one kilowatt of power mix two which is two kilowatts of power and gas then we've got electric one and electric two all right um so we can if, when we're plugged into mains, we can either use one kilowatt of electric or two, depending on what kind of power access we have at the site. Um, so you'll find most sites will tell you what, what kind of ampage you can draw. Um, but you'll soon figure it out if you keep putting it on two kilowatts of power here. You're running your fridge on, on electric as well. Uh, you've got your hair dry going and then you keep tripping out your fuses down here, which we'll have a look at in a minute. You'll realise that you're trying to draw too much current. So you come in here, put it down to electric one, and then you'll find you can balance it out a little bit. All right. Um, Obviously, the more kilowattage you've got, the better the heating system will run. Um, but you'll soon sort of figure that one out for yourself, really. Um, we can then select our fan. All right, so I can have it on eco or high. All right, so eco is obviously quieter than the high. But uh, when you first want to heat the van up in the winter, you might want to put it on high just to get that air circulating a little bit quicker. And at night time, you want to put it on eco so it's a little bit quieter. Um, but again, it's about playing around with it and you'll soon work that one out. There are other settings you can go into um, and set timers and things. There's an instruction manual in the book pack over there, so I'll read that if you want to go to any further. But mainly, the main thing to know is temperature inside the van, water, is it on or off or is it on boost? What kind of power are we using and how high is our fan running, okay? There's also another setting in here, so you can do the same, exactly the same from over here, okay? So we've got our hot water settings, we've got our energy setting here as well, all touch screen, so we can change that around as we wish to, all right? Um, so that is how that operates. Just from this panel over here, obviously we've got our lighting system we've looked at, um, awning light, which is the light just above the door. Okay, we can turn that on and off from here as well. We can look at our power settings, it'll tell us what our solar is doing, tell us the state of our leisure battery, okay? Um, so that gives us, and also our vehicle battery as well, but we've not plugged into a car at the minute, so we don't have to worry about that. But we've also got the radio as well, okay? So we can select, if we go up to mode, we can select AUX, um, 
FM, AM. All right, and then our volume is over this side. All right, so and we can set presets and all sorts of different things. Not forgetting as well, of course, in here, you have an aux in as well, so you can plug your phone in just there to uh, to connect via the via the aux as well. But you also have Bluetooth settings as well, so you look you can pair your phone via Bluetooth, and you've got lots of other settings in here as well: screen brightness, timeout, night mode, whether the, the keys beep when you hit them or not. All right, um, so that's kind of how the panel works. All right, again. Any questions, just let us know. But uh, it's, a, it's just about playing around with it, really, just to make sure that you, you know what you're doing. Uh, if we just turn, turn that radio off so I'm not battling with it. Um, okay. Um, now, we're talking about tr uh, tripping fuses and things out, so let's have a look down here. This is our main PSU down here, okay? So this tells us... Um, uh, two things this side is our 12 volt side this side is our 240 volt side so this is for, uh, deals with the battery side we've got our blade fuses in there so we can see um if we need to change a fuse that's where we come to to do so it does tell us what all the fuses do down on this panel just down here again with the trips does exactly the same over here so we've got three trips and then a main rcd we've got a main system shutdown button up the top over here okay and um, that's for the 12 volt system so if you're leaving the van for any period of time you want to make sure you're not drawing anything off your battery if you turn that off then that will um, that will do exactly that on this side if we're running on 240 volt for our heating and battery charger we need to make sure we're pressing these buttons here so they're illuminated if i do that you can see that will all right um so make sure they are down if you're using the van and you want to be charging your battery and you want hot water and heating otherwise you'll be uh, fighting a bit of a losing cause um but the main thing i want to talk about here is this rcd okay so when you're plugged in on site nine times out of ten and um, if you have a problem getting power to your van it's not actually your van it's where you're plugged into so this is how we can test that so if you're struggling to get your your sockets working or you can't get your boiler working on um, 240 volt or your fridge come to here press this yellow button here which is the test button okay if nothing happens this doesn't trip that tells us there's no power coming to the unit so you need to check where you're plugged into they also have trip switches as well check your lead things like that okay if I press this button and it does trip, that tells me I've got power coming to the van. All right, so it's a good little test to know, is there a problem with the van or is there a problem with where I'm plugged in? All right. right. We'll have a quick look at the kitchen as well now. All right, um, so we have a domestic fridge here. So it's a three-way fridge. Okay, so that means it will work on 12 volt power from our car when we're driving. That's our battery setting. It will work on gas if we're off-grid. Okay, and it will also work on mains power as well. This is what we've got it set up at the moment. You can see it's illuminated there with the plug. And you can also see the auto button is illuminated as well. I tend to leave the fridge with this one on auto because it will pick its preferred power source. All right. So, for instance, it's on electric at the moment. If your electric tripped out, it would then light itself onto gas. Um, and then when you plug it into the car, it will then put it over onto the 12 volt system. Um, so it means that if your van trips out when you're um, when you're when you're out, OK, uh, maybe at the post or whatever, at least it will uh, switch itself over to gas. So you can just select leave it on that. You can change it, of course, so I can light the fridge on gas by quite purely just going over and doing that with the um, the top button here. All right, and I can put it over to this one as well, which is our battery. But of course, it's saying I can't do that because we're not plugged into the car. But if you leave it on also, you can't go too far wrong. We can change the temperature of the fridge by pressing the temperature button here. Okay, very much like your fridge at home. Tend not to like to run on max. Not quite sure why, um, but they do change between themselves better um, when you leave them just just off the maximum there. All right, so just it's a bit of advice really. Um, fridge is in here. It's been on a couple of days now, so that's nice and cold. So that's all working properly, and the freezer is very cold. So that's how we want it. Uh, we've talked about our taps as well. So just bear in mind, obviously that hot that water when it does come out is hot. All right. There we go. To the point where I can't even touch that. All right, uh, but we can mix it with some cold as well for when we're doing our washing up and bits and pieces. But just there, it does come out hot. All right, um, we've got light switches up here for our kitchen. Okay, the top one does the up lighters for the lounge, and this one does our down lighter in the kitchen. All right, two 240 volt sockets for our kettles, toters, that sort of thing. And we do have some cutouts to run leaves down if we wish to as well. Um, we have a microwave up here. Um, I'm going to teach you how to use a microwave. The only thing I will say is don't travel with your microwave plate in. Okay, we all find it in the book pack when you pick your van up because that's where we put them. Um, but we do see these fly out 
dent worktop floors and all sorts of things and smash on the floor so just bear in mind that we don't want to be traveling around with that in the van uh, in here we have our solar panel charger okay um, so that is just uh, regulating the current from our solar panel to our leisure battery again nothing you need to do um, you can see we've got a green light there so we know that that's operating properly that's just the plug for your um, for your microwave so bear in mind the microwave is only 240 volts so you won't be able to use that off the battery you'd have to be plugged into mains to use it okay um oven and grill all right when we're traveling make sure that we keep the, um, the again for the same reason as we talked with the microwave plate keep the um the, the the glass top down all right they do they can come loose these do bounce around a lot when you're driving okay so make sure that's down um otherwise you'll come in and find that smashed on the floor okay and every now and again it's worth just coming and just nipping up these screws here as well if you start to find it get a little bit loose um so Anyway, three gas burner on this, all right? I'm not gonna teach you to, to, to suck eggs particularly, but uh, the way we light these is we turn them on, hold them down, the igniter switch is there, and there we go, that's lit your hob, all right? So they, they all work in the same way. It's always a good idea when you have first turned on your gas and you get to site, just come and light one of your hobs, leave it to burn for a few seconds, just to, a bit like we purged the water system, that purges the gas system as well, just gets the air out of the system. Separate grill, separate oven. Uh, they light in exactly the same way. So just an example with the oven, hold it down. There we go. And then we just set our temperature and then we're cooking. But bear in mind, this, is a dom this isn't a domestic oven, it's a caravan oven. Um, so um, it may take a little bit longer to cook things all right, than it does in your domestic oven at home. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, more storage down there. Uh, we also have um, sort of a pantry and bits and pieces in here with our uh, draining board is also sat in there we can put on the edge of the sink so we don't get water all over the sink. Okie dokie. Um, we'll just talk about sort of windows and blinds and things quickly. Um, our skylight here opens by pushing the button and pulling back. Okay, we do have some ratchets that we can put in as well so we don't have to open it all the way. Again, just remembering to shut that when we have uh, finished the hole there, we're gonna to be towing. And also if it starts to rain, if you've got these open and you've got your blinds shut, for instance, you might not remember. So just keep an eye on that kind of thing. Again, we've got blackout blinds and fly screens, all right? Same for this one, it's just slightly smaller, okay? Um, We've got our TV bracket sitting over here as well, so we can get a TV in here if we wish to. But the only thing I would say is don't travel with the TV on there. Again, for the same reason, things bounce around quite a lot, so you can remove the TV um, when you're traveling. Um, from the window point of view, these are click-clack windows, so to, to open them, we just unlock them like so. All right, and we're listening for clicks when we open it. There we go. So once you hear the click, you let it fall back onto that click. There we go. And then to put it back down, simply lift and push back down and lock. You can lock it in a breather position, so leaving it slightly open. If you wanted to, if you're going out for a day and it was hot, you want to keep some airflow. But if you're leaving for any period of time or when you're traveling, make sure that these windows are shut properly. Um, again, fly screen and blind. So all the windows work in the same way. This one's just got a blind, of course, because it doesn't open, so it doesn't need a fly screen. But all the others you'll find will, will have that. Uh, USB ports are there, okay, and you also have a, a domestic power socket, of course, only usable when you are plugged into mains, all right. Uh, coffee table here, that drops drops down like so, all right, but we can just slide that back down. Just be careful when you're doing that, if you've got things on top of here, all right, drinks and things like that, when we pull that out, um, we've I've experienced it myself with a glass of red wine, um, so just bear that in mind, you don't want things flying around all over the place. Um, you'll find your book pack, which is here, it's gonna be in this drawer here, all right. So that's that. We know how to use our bed. We pull the slats out from here all the way to the end. We then drop our cushions in. We always sleep on the flat side of this. Okay, so flip them all around. You can see you've got a bit of a bolster on this seat. Flip that over that way. Okay, so the bolster is on the window side. That way we've got a nice flat surface going all the way across the van. Um, I'll just have a quick look in all the cupboards just to make sure we're not missing anything. Good. Okay, let's have a look in our bathroom then. Right, light switch for the bathroom's just down here. Okay, there we go. Uh, so we'll talk about our toilet first. Um, we looked at it from outside. Our flush tank is set up here and our cassette is sat in here, all right? So we use the toilet in the normal way. Okay, so we press the button, 
the obviously it's empty at the minute, but that will create the flush. This will then fill up with the fluid that you have in your flush tank, okay? Um, and then you can see the gate at the bottom there. This lever down here, we push to one side. That opens the gate, everything falls down into the cassette, and then we push this all the way back over, making sure it does go all the way over, all right? And that then recreates the seal and keeps everything locked away in there, okay? So you do wanna make sure that is all the way across because that is your seal between the tank and your van, all right? Um, also, if you do have that all the way, don't have that all the way over, when it comes to removing it from outside, you won't be able to. So if you're struggling to get it out um, from, the, from the locker, then you, it's because you haven't got that shut properly. We have the uh, little uh, symbol here that tells us that um, it illuminates when it tells us to um, empty the toilet cassette, okay? Okay, in here you've got your carpets and everything sat in here. You've also got your TV aerial, all right? Directional TV aerial, status one we have here. Uh, when we want to deploy it, we undo the locking nut. Okay, there we go. And then we just push it up and lock it back into place again. That's now extended over the top of the van, okay? Um, we can then twiddle this around. That will change the plane of the aerial um, to try and get a better signal if we need to, okay? Um, but don't forget when we have finished with it and we're traveling, again, Make sure it's all the way back down again, okay? We've got a TV booster box here as well. So when you are using your TV, you wanna turn that on from the top there, little black switch. And then we have a gain on the front. Um, this will just turn on and off with your master switch. So if you wanna leave it on, you can do. Uh, it doesn't draw that much power, um, but just you can turn it off and turn it on. So if you're struggling to get a picture, it may well be that you haven't got that box there on. All right. Table sat in here, so here's your freestanding table for when you're eating your, your dinner. All right, that sits in the, in the in the lounge area there, but that's where you're going to locate that. We know about taps and things like that, so we know how that all works. So we're happy with that. Just move that plug out of the way, and the shower as well. Okay, is held back at the moment, as you can see, uh, for when we're travelling. Again, lots of you want to make sure everything's secure when you're traveling and not bouncing around. Okay, so it sounds like there's a lot to do, but you'll soon get into a routine of it. But we just pull this out and that will allow this to, to free flow and then the magnets will do their job. All right. Okay. Right, that's pretty much it. What we'll do now is we will um, sort of reverse it. Oh, the only other thing is here you've got your two um, carbon monoxide alarm and fire alarm. go so you'll soon know if there's uh, any problems because they're very very loud um okay so we've, we've we've been on holiday we've had a nice time all right um we're gonna start start packing up ready to go um all your tv aerial point and 12 volt socket are there as well for your tv um so what we'll do is we'll we'll start the um putting the band to bed in, in essence all right so what i'm gonna do is gonna come i'm gonna turn off my main panel first all right just hold the button down there There we go, you can see all my lights and everything are turned off there, so that's all good. I'm then gonna come and turn off my fridge. You, this is on a separate circuit, so it won't turn off with your main panel. The reason for that is, of course, you may well be using the uh, the towing function uh, for keeping your fridge on, okay? There we go. You can also leave your fridge on a breather setting, so you have this little clip here, if you push that out. So, um, so you push it in and then push it out, okay? That will then allow you to clip the fridge open, but not fully shut, so it will breathe the fridge in essence, so it won't get all, all smelly if you're leaving it for a long period of time, okay? Um, now we wanna start draining the van down, so we're gonna come back underneath our seat here, okay? And we're gonna open up our drain valve, which is here, the yellow one that we looked at earlier, okay? So we're just gonna open that. You can now hear all the water draining out of the boiler to the floor, which is what we want. I'm going to put the seat down now. Okay, then what we want to do is come and leave all of our taps open in between hot and cold. All right. The reason we do that um, 
and it's good practice to get into. If we can leave the van empty of any water at all, um, every time we finish with it, then we can't get in too much trouble. The reason for that, when water freezes, it expands. If we leave water in the pipes, okay, it can expand. We see crack taps, crack pipes, all sorts of things. And then you have, when you come to use your van again, um, especially after a winter season, uh, you come back and you find you've got leaks, crack taps, all sorts of things. So if every time you leave your boiler drain valve open and all of your taps drain down your toilet, um, and your flush tank in the toilet as well you can't go too far wrong all right so in between hot and cold that way the air gets down through both legs of the system okay then what we want to do is to start um it's not the rigging stuff from the outside really so what you would do is come stow away your acarole and your waste master you can see here where our boiler is draining down underneath there so we take out our pump there we go Give that a good old shake off. I'm going to put that in the front locker here. I'm going to turn off my gas bottle because if we're traveling, of course, we want to make sure that's off, as we said earlier, and also make sure that it is strapped in. I'm actually going to remove this gas bottle because it's my test bottle, um, but um, that's how you would um, go home. All right, and then stow your, empty your Acro, empty your waste master, put all your bits and pieces away. Some people store these in, in, in their showers to stop them rolling around, but you'll come up with your own way of doing it. My colleague's just given me the nod to say that he has unplugged our power lead from the other end. So that means I can unplug from the van. We don't want to be walking around with a live cable. So we always um, plug it into the, to the non-live end first and then and, and the other way around when we are um, using these, okay? And also with these leads, if they're on a drum, okay, and they're in a big coil, we don't want to be, um, we want to make sure we're flaking them out all the way. So if we leave them in the coil, they can draw, they draw, draw a lot of current and they do get hot. So we can end up melting cables and damaging them. So flake them out so they're not in a roll, okay, even if it's under the van so it doesn't look too messy, but uh, don't leave them on a coil. Um, emptying our, um, our toilet and draining off our flush tank as well, okay. Uh, and then that makes sure we are ready to go on the road. Um, what I'll quickly do is just show you how the motor mover works. You would then of course take up all your legs. Your wind is in the front locker, but you can get uh, drill adapters for them, which does make life a little bit easier. Just be careful not to over, over tighten them when you're going up. Okay. So on motor mover then, we need three things, okay? And this is in the doorway here, that's when you'll find them when you pick your van up. So we need our engaging tool here, you need your isolator key and you need your remote control. So we're gonna take all three of those. And we're gonna start with this one here. So we need to put the rollers for the mover onto the wheel. So you can see you've got a roller here, one either side, and that grips onto the wheel and that's what moves the van. So this goes onto this sprocket here. Make sure it goes all the way in. Okay, so we're happy with that. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna push it down. That's gonna push the roller onto the van, keeping your hands out the way. It does take a little bit of effort. All right, there we go. We'll look at, that's the clonk we're looking for. All right. Then we're gonna make sure that it is engaged on both sides. Good, we're happy with that. Once we're engaged, we're in a position to take off our handbrake. All right, what we don't wanna be doing it's taking our handbrake off before we've engaged it because if you're on any kind of a slope, you're gonna find yourself chasing your caravan down a hill and that's sort of not a very good way to start or finish your holiday. Um, so that is now being held on the rollers, so we're happy with that. The isolator key goes just in here where you've taken your main seat out of. That will expose the switch. So turn that on, okay. Once that's on, that's allowing the power from the battery to go to your motor mover. Bear in mind though, if you do turn that on and then you leave this for a while and come back, it won't work because it does time out after a while. If it's not working, you'll need to turn it off and turn it back on again if you're not going to be using it immediately. Then turn on your handset. Two green on buttons there, one and two. And we're looking for a nice green steady light there. We're then going to turn this all the way around and you can see we've got a picture of a caravan at the top there. That tells me that this way is forwards. So if I press forwards, There we go, and backwards. Really good tool, you can be pretty pinpoint accurate with this. If you're gonna be putting it on a, up your driveway or even onto the back of your car or onto your pitch, you can, you can really be accurate with it. It will pretty much turn on its own axis. All right, we'll have a go with this when you pick the van up, of course. 
but there we go really really good tool then once we're in the position that we want to be in okay we're going to come first thing we're going to do is put our handbrake on there we go okay uh, that way we're in a position to now disengage our motor mover so what we need is our tool again that we used to put it on with but we're going to go the other way again making it sure it goes all the way on with this otherwise you end up sort of bending the end of it there we go this will come off much easier than when it on but it does make a bit of a clunk there we go then we're going to remove that from there put that back in the doorway and then we turn off our handset just press one of the green buttons remove our key from the uh from in here put those back in the in the doorway um you that's just your your hitch lock on the front there as well okay so you've got a hitch lock with the van as well um it's an alco hitch lock um and of course your alco wheel locks in there as well okay um so that is pretty much your ace ambassador i hope that makes some sense uh if not obviously we're on the end of the phone and there are instruction manuals in the van as well but uh, enjoy your new van and we look forward to seeing your collection